Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to another episode of Lunch Guide. I am your host Chef Andy and today we are going to be doing something out of the ordinary. I'm going to be showing you how you can actually be able to have a very beautiful steak lunch and we are going to be incorporating that with a bit of mushrooms, a bit of red wine, some cheese, some potatoes and we're going to turn it into a beautiful dish. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the ingredients in front of me today. So from the front, I've got some teriyaki and some soy sauce. I've got some uh, unsalted butter there. I've got some cumin powder, some parsley and some oregano, some regular iodized salt. I also have some white onions here, some beautiful mushrooms. I've got some red wine here in the decanter. I've got some stock here, a bit of olive oil and black pepper corns in the, in the paper mill here. I've also got some parboiled potatoes. I've got a beautiful bowl here with some egg whites. So this is basically to show you what you can do with some leftover egg whites. I also have some grated cheddar cheese and two steaks of very, very beautiful saloon. So without further ado, we are going to jump into a short break and when we come back, I'm going to show you how to convert this beautiful ingredients into a beautiful dish. See you after the short break. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, for those who missed out on the introductory bit of the show, I'm going to be showing you how to make a very very light, simple and quick dish that you can be able to have for lunch. We're going to be making some sirloin steak, we're going to be serving that with some mushroom sauce with red wine and some croquet potatoes on the side. So without further ado, I'm actually now going to start with the steaks and I'm going to show you just how to get your steaks ready for the, for the grilling bit of it. So very, very simple technique. Um, I always insist, if you're going to work with meat, try not to work with it when it's bloody, especially when you're going to grill it. Always at least let it sit in your fridge beforehand, especially if you're thawing it from the freezer or if it's too bloody. Always have a nice, beautiful piece of napkin at the bottom, which will just absorb all the blood. And as you can see, our bowl is nice and clean. You don't have any blood running all over the place. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to season our steaks, so very, very simple seasoning technique. So I'm just going to move those to a fresh plate. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to season that with some salt. I'm going to season it with some black pepper as well. And then I'm just going to turn those around and we're just going to repeat the same process. So one thing you need to learn about this particular stage is uh, that the salt actually allows you to try and extract all the excess juices that are in the steak. And what happens is when you actually throw your steak onto a hot pan, what happens is the, 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 the salt layer that is at the, on the outside keeps the outside dry, but actually allows the inside to actually not let out the juices when it's on the pan. And second of all, it's also a beautiful technique of seasoning your steak because remember your meat will be cooking from outside in, which means as it continues to grill on the pan, it's just going to continue absorbing the salt and the black pepper seasoning. So we are just going to drizzle a bit of olive oil on our griddle pan here. And we're just going to give that a few seconds to heat up and while that continues, I'm also going to have another pan on the side. This is basically where we are going to be doing our sauces. So for that, I'm going to be working with a bit of some white onion. So I'm just going to take the tip off. Just going to make about five indentations from, this, from the top there. Then I'm going to cut it across once. And all I'm going to do is finish that off and basically what we are looking for is some very, very beautiful small size onions, just the way we did this first one. And I'm going to do the same thing with another onion. Always cut it lengthways like that. Always just allows you to get a nicer, finer size of your onions. 
And I always discard the stems first. All right, so a very, very simple technique of making a sauce. So we are going to be making a red wine sauce, and for that we are going to be incorporating some red wine. We're going to be incorporating some butter. We're going to be incorporating uh, a bit of some seasoning, some stock, and we're just going to cook that down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fry our onions. So nice, generous drizzle of olive oil. I'm going to throw my onions in there. And now, as you can see, our griddle pan is nice and hot. We're just, be we're just beginning to see the, a bit of smoke coming from the top. And this is just about the best time you can actually move your steak. Just about the best time you can move your steak onto your pan. So I'm just going to lay them one on each side of the griddle pan. Remember the beautiful thing about having one of these pans is you actually get the beautiful griddle marks on your steak and it actually is a very, very good thing, especially when it comes to visual. Right, so we're just going to let our steak start grilling and in the meantime, I'm just going to continue with the sauce on the side. So as I said, very, very simple technique. Right, I'm also going to add a bit of that butter into the same pan. So I'm using just a small amount of olive oil and just a bit of butter just to give it a nice velvety finish. And we're just going to saute those onions. We're just going to sweat them slightly. We're not going to color them. And right after that, we're going to go in with our mushrooms. And now all we're going to do is we're going to give that just a bit of time to cook, but always remember to continue tossing your pan. If it's still a difficult technique for you, you can just use a spoon. I prefer to just toss the pan because it's now a very a custom technique. All right, so while that continues, I'm just going to season that with just a little bit of black pepper. And we're also going to add about two pinches of salt. All right, so our steaks have now been grilling for about two to three minutes on the first side. You can be able to see the nice, beautiful gray ring on the sides of the pan. So this is just about the time you know it's about time to turn it around. So I'm just going to lift that and turn them around. And as you can see, very, very beautiful griddle marks there. So remember the first technique of, uh, the, first technique of the cooking stage is just to get the color on it. We are going to take the steaks out. We are going to give them a bit of time to rest and then we are going to finish them off. In the meantime, just going to check on our mushroom sauce here. All right, so nice, beautiful aromas coming through. So to that, I'm going to be adding some of that cumin powder. And as I said, ladies and gentlemen, definitely a very simple and quick steak that you can alternatively have with your lunch. Uh, uh, I always insist, if you're going to be serving this, try and also serve it with a, a, a very light starch. Remember, it's a lunch. You don't really want to have too much at lunchtime, and you don't have any more room to have anything in between your lunch and your dinner. So this is a very good option for that. So to the mushrooms, I'm going to add a bit of soy sauce and a bit of teriyaki. So as you can see, the color totally changes immediately. We're just going to give that a nice quick toss as I'm doing now. And just to deglaze the pan, I'm going to be adding our red wine. So I'm just using Sauvignon Blanc. All right, so we're just going to give that a bit of time to cook. And we're just going to let the, 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 the wine reduce. So the reduction process is basically crucial because this is a stage that allows you to reduce all the, all the alcohol from the sauce and actually extract all the flavors from it. All right, so we're actually going to let that cook down a little bit more. We're going to give it a bit of time to continue. And on this side, our steaks are now nicely grilled. So all I'm going to do at this stage is I'm just going to take the steaks off the heat and we're basically just going to set them aside and we're going to allow them to cool off. 
Very, very simple, as I said. So remember, it's always crucial to give your steak a bit of time to rest. This allows the steak to really tenderize. It allows the muscles to relax. And what happens is you're not going to end up with a very tough steak that's extremely hard to enjoy. All right. So as we wait for the steaks, as I said, it's more of a chase process. So basically, you want to just have your steaks resting, have your sauce going. And right in between that, we're, we're just going to stop the sauce somewhere along the way. So I'm just going to let that continue cooking for a few minutes. I'm going to leave it on the pan. I'm going to turn it off. I'm just going to let the flavors uh, really, really get together in there. But before we do that, I'm going to add just a little bit of stock. So remember, there's two, there's two beautiful advantages to cooking with stock. First of all, you remember this is a liquid that you've been uh, boiling or putting uh, or having on the pan for a bit of time. What happens is you manage to extract a lot of flavors from it. And what happens is from all the vegetables that I boiled and uh, made the stock with, all those flavors are incorporated in the stock. So it's actually a good alternative to use instead of using your regular water or just yeah, or just pouring just tap water into your sauce. Remember, you're trying to build a beautiful sauce. You're actually having it with some beautiful steak, so you definitely don't want your sauce to let you down. Right, so that's nicely going. So we're just going to give that a bit of time. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you the croquette mixture and basically how to get about it. So the sauce, I'm just going to bring the temperature lower and I'm just going to let that continue undisturbed. And on the side, I am now going to show you the croquettes. And for that, you will need a few ingredients. Um, very crucial that you have uh, some of your egg, which is your binding agent. Croquettes, because we're making them with potatoes, you're definitely going to need some pre-cooked potatoes. And now just to give that a coating, I'm going to be using some breadcrumbs and some flour. Now we're going to jump into a short break and when we come back, I'm actually now going to take you through the process of coating the croquettes. Uh, we're just going to have them going in the oil quickly and then we're just going to finish that off by plating the, uh, frying the croquettes until they're nicely golden brown. Then we're actually going to have our steak finish off on a hot pan and then we're just, go we're just going to go straight into the serving. So don't touch that dial, we'll be back after a short break. back ladies and gentlemen for those who are just joining in and those who missed out on what we were doing before we had just finished grilling the steaks for the first cooking process I also have some beautiful red wine and mushroom sauce already going on the pan and I've got a beautiful pan here with some oil that's already heating up so now I'm going to show you how to do the potato croquettes so remember these were just uh, parboiled potatoes I just peel them and boil them in some salty water and now I'm going to show you how to, to convert this into croquettes. So I'm just going to use my wooden spoon to just break those into smaller pieces. So potato, cro potato croquettes basically is a very, very good option to having a starch, uh, to having rice or just plain old mashed potatoes. And the visual appearance, as you're going to see, it really makes a difference, especially when you're serving your dish. So that's just about okay now. So what you're looking for is you're just crushing the sizes and getting them to a, uh, a, more, a more of a rustic mashed potato. And then now to that, we're going to just season it with some uh, parsley and some oregano. I'm also going to add some cheddar cheese, some grated cheddar cheese. And then last but not least, bit of black pepper and about two, pin two to three pinches of salt and 
All I'm going to do now is just use my spoon to combine that. So remember the mixture is quite a dry one. As I said, it's a very, very light uh, accompaniment to your steak. Right, now we have this beautiful mix. And this is now just about ready. So one of the few techniques I like to use to make my croquettes, I like to use some greaseproof paper, which is what I have here now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my potato mixture onto the greaseproof paper. Just be sure to scoop out everything in your bowl. Please don't be tempted to waste. Right, so very, very simple. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the aid of my greaseproof paper to just get that into a nice workable uh, cylindrical shape. So first I start by just pressing it against the surface. This is just to make sure that there is no air pockets in between. And all you're going to do now is just try and spread it out. So as you can see, it's got a nice beautiful lump to it. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my greaseproof paper to just try and stretch that out a little wider. And then I'm just going to finish by just shaking it off to one side of my greaseproof paper. And all I'm going to do is just roll it out all the way around. So start by just making sure you've got a more kind of even uh, even thickness to it before you start rolling. I always like to also uh, tuck in the sides with my thumbs. This is just to make sure you try and get the same thickness all through to the end. And once you get that far, it's a little simpler from there. So all I do is hold my sheet from the back and I fold it over once. And then I just tuck the sides like that. And then I roll it all the way to the end like that. Simple as that. Just always give it a bit of a roll just to get the, the shape nice and set. And all I'm going to do now is open that up. And as you can see, it forms a nice, beautiful cylindrical shape. Now what we're going to do to this is basically we're now going to split that up. So I'm just going to try and separate that into three equal bits. And there's this nice, beautiful chunk which I'm going to set aside. So I don't, I don't try not to waste your sheet as well. Just use the same sheet to just get your croquette in shape. So as I said, uh, it's a little bit of a labor, some technique of making potatoes, but believe me, the overall appearance and the finished product of it, it really, really makes a difference. So just roll that. As I said, when you roll it out, this actually just allows you to give it shape and to actually make sure that your potato is actually nice and solid right through to the middle. And please, if you notice that uh, your potatoes are slightly overcooked or you can't get your mixture to hold that shape, you could always sprinkle in just a bit of flour. It will dry out the mixture a little bit and you can actually be able to get it to form as it is now. So very, very simple. I'm just going to check my oil, see if we're ready to fry. So as you can see, it bubbles right as soon as the flour hits it. So we know we're okay. So now the next stage is basically the coating. And basically this is all a matter of just taking it into the eggs and then working it around the flour, just like that. And always just shake it a little bit just to get the excess flour off. And then just repeat the same process for the, for the other two pieces. So just simple as that all the way in. Always try to use a nice, beautiful, or rather big, wide plate because it does allow you to play around with the croquette as well. You can be able to roll it all around. And I'll repeat the same with this last piece. All I'm going to do is coat it the same way. And as I said, always remember to just play around with it on your hands. This actually helps you get the excess flour off. 
And now, right after that, so always start with your flour, your flour layer because that actually allows you to get your breadcrumbs to stick really well. And now the next step would just be repeating the same process through the egg and through the breadcrumbs. So I'm just going to toss that in a bit of egg again. I'm going to give that a lift. All I'm going to do is give those a coating. Basically, once that is done, as you can see, it comes into a nice, beautiful, solid shape. Just try and shape it with your hands. Always try and also just work it through your fingers. Make sure you don't have any excess. And from there, that will just basically go straight into your oil. And you'll just repeat the same process with the other two pieces. So one also beautiful technique to season your croquettes, I like to do it as well. Uh, you could either season your flour and season your breadcrumbs or you could season your breadcrumbs because that is the outermost layer and of course season your potatoes while you're still mashing them. That should actually give you a very good taste right through. And of course for those that are lactose intolerant, uh, sorry, uh, for those that are actually if you do have a condition that doesn't allow you to, co to consume any milk or any flour substances, you can actually avoid the breadcrumb stage, you can avoid the flour and you can just uh, fry them directly into the oil. But I will recommend you may have to really have a very dry mixture because it may fall apart as soon as it goes into your fryer. Alright, so simple as that. So basically we are going to be frying those for about uh, four minutes while we toss them around the oil. And as you can see the mushroom sauce is nice and done so we are just going to turn that pan around. And I'll just have the griddle going and on this side I'm just going to turn those croquettes around and you can start seeing the coloring from the bottom there. So it does give you a nice beautiful dark color. Remember you don't want to compromise on not cooking it right through to the center. And all you're going to do is just be sure to keep tossing them around just to make sure you get an even color all around. Right, so that's almost done. We're just going to clear our beautiful space here. So those are just about done. So as I said, remember the potatoes are already cooked, so you're not really cooking it again. You're just finishing them off. And once these are done, it is always also advisable to have a bit of uh, parchment paper or some napkins. And I like to just open those up and set them on my plate like that. I always go with two or three sheets. That gives you quite a bit of layers so basically you don't have to keep replacing them that should be able to soak up enough oil from three croquettes so just set those out like that you can turn that heat off now and all i'm going to do is move this onto the parchment paper and i'm just going to give those just a few seconds to drain and those are just about ready to serve Right, so very, very simple technique as I mentioned. Um, something that should be able to take you a very short time to complete. And in the meantime, I'm just going to clear the station. And now um, we're going to take a short commercial break. We're gonna clean up our beautiful station here. I'm just going to allow the pan to reheat. And when we do come back, we're just going to finish grilling off the steaks. I'm going to show you how to plate it, how to set your sauce on the plate, and then basically how to serve the dish. See you after shopping. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, for those who are just catching up, uh, we were just doing some croquette potatoes. We have our sauce now ready to go. Last but not least, I'm just going to show you how to finish off your steak. And I'm going to show you a very, very, uh, a very, very French way of finishing it off. We normally just finish it off with a bit of butter. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a nice knob of butter in my pan. So this is a very, very beautiful technique to actually get your steaks to really look attractive on the plate. And while that melts, I'm just going to start moving these onto the plate as we continue. So I'm just going to have those just like that. Very, very simple technique, ladies and gentlemen, as I said. So our butter is now nice and melted. I'm now just going to transfer my steaks into the pan. And all we are going to do now is we're going to slide our steaks to the front of the pan. And I'm just going to tilt it a little sideways. And all I'm going to do is just baste it with all the butter that is melting down plus the juices. So the beautiful part about this technique is... Uh, Remember your steaks have been resting and uh, the best way to actually reheat them is not to throw them back on a very hot pan, especially with olive oil and overcook them too quickly. The beauty of this is uh, the butter actually allows you to cook the steak on the inside nice and gently. And the beautiful part about it again is it doesn't leave your steaks dry, it doesn't leave them tough and the general appearance really looks good. So we do that for one side and then I just switch them to the other. I'm just going to give those a few minutes to continue. And in the meantime, I'm going to start plating my mushroom sauce. So as you can see, it's nice, nice and chunky. Definitely one of the be most beautiful sauces you could ever have on your steak. Remember having your sauce pureed might actually take the fun out of enjoying your steak. So I actually find that having a uh, sauce with a bit of chunky vegetable to it actually complements your plate and makes it look a bit more visually presentable. So I'm just going to lay my mushrooms. So we're just going to serve the steaks on a bed of mushrooms. I'm just going to spread those around just like that. So uh, other options you could use to the sauce, there's definitely a lot of info you can be able to get online. There's tons of sauces that really go well with your steaks. This particular one I like because mushrooms are very much in season. And the beautiful thing about it is whenever you're thinking of making a beautiful sauce to go with your steak or other ingredients to make with your dish, always go with something seasonal because if you do want to repeat and enjoy the same dish, it's a little easier and it's actually even more possible. Right, so just going to finish basting those off. So remember these were cooked to rare and uh, we're just looking for medium rare consistency. So very, very simple technique we chefs use to actually tell uh, the cooking stages of a steak. So I like to use the, pie, uh, the, the hand rule and basically this is uh, in accordance to the feel on your hand. So basically what would happen is if you start by touching your thumb and your index finger, that should actually be a rare steak. If I use my middle finger, that should be a medium to well, uh, sorry, a medium rare. When I touch there, it should be now a medium to well. And if I touch my thumb and my last finger and the feeling on your hand, that should be a well done steak. So basically it's just a bit of pointers to actually help you be able to tell the doneness of your steak. And now the beautiful thing about getting used to grilling steaks, which is something you do build over time, the more you actually try different cuts and different techniques with your steak, the more you'll actually be able to realize different techniques and timings for your steak, and you can be able to get the same uh, product and consistency every time. Right, so these are just about done. So I'm just going to turn off the heat now. I'm just going to finish basting off the remainder there. So as you can see, 
The color is really nice, rich, and it actually looks a little more appealing. So now all I'm going to do is serve these. So I'm just going to lay one of these pieces on the plate and the, one, the other one I'm just going to show you what it looks like and I'm going to use one of these small boards I have. Right, so I'm just going to move that there and this I'm just basically going to, I'm just basically going to use it to show you the inside of the steak and all you do with the rest of the sauce, please don't be tempted to pour that down the drain, there's a lot of flavor to it and I would just add it just like that. I'll finish it off with some of the red wine that was left as well. Just pour that right over the steak. And I'll just simply finish that off with a spring of rosemary. Now for this other steak, I'm just going to cut this through and I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So as you can see, the color is nice and even. You can actually be able to tell just from the steak there that that's, that's basically a beautiful medium to well steak. Remember some key points to check on. Uh, it shouldn't be too gray. Remember the darker the color, the more cooked it is. The lighter the color and the more it's closer to red, the more undercooked it is. So this would be basically a very, very beautiful sign of a steak that's just about medium to well. And this would actually be very beautiful to serve. So probably another four or five minutes cooking to this and you'd actually have a very beautiful, well done steak. So ladies and gentlemen, it has been my pleasure showing you how to play around with steak and some croquette potatoes today. I do hope you're going to have the courage and the motivation to actually try this yourselves at home. One thing I insist, please don't rely on the same cut of meat every time. Try, I would say, try a few styles, try a, uh, a few different techniques. Also switch your pans around. I was using a griddle pan which is a little thicker and it gets a little hotter. You can also try out with, the, uh, with pans that you do have in your house. Uh, a good technique to, a good, uh, one of the good signs of a good pan is it should be nonstick. Remember, nonstick pan just, it actually saves you the stress of using too much oil and struggling too much to let your food cook on its own. And uh, also another thing to watch out for, um, the dish does have a bit of high calorie to it. It's got a bit of butter to it, uh, a lot of red wine in there. Uh, a bit of olive oil in there so I would recommend if you're going to be serving this to someone with a bit of a, a food allergy or some food restrictions always try and find out which is the best technique and which is the best sauce to serve so from the studios and myself it's been a pleasure being with all of you today you have been watching lunch guide and my name is chef Andy I've been your host today and until the next show it's been a pleasure. Do remember to leave your comments, your inquiries, and any questions you have on our Facebook page, and we will get back to you. So from my end of news, I'm going to have this steak for lunch now. I'm going to enjoy it. See you on the next show. Bye-bye.